Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, it's been a while since we've been live with beautiful reminders. And uh, this morning, I have a really, really important reminder for every one of us. Normally, we say, yeah, I know the brother or I know the sister. And, you know, we actually bear witness for them or against them. And we say we know them. So, subhanAllah, today I want to discuss this issue. Do you really know them? Do you really know him or her? Talking of anyone whom you are perhaps bearing witness for or against. People say, I know the person. It's very dangerous. It's very, very delicate. It's actually an extremely serious matter to say, I know the person. And you don't really know them. So do you really know them? That is a question you need to ask yourself. So it is reported that a man came to Umar ibn Khattab anhu, to bear witness about someone. So the Prophet وسلم, or about something. Uh, so Umar ibn Khattab anhu, says to the man that, you know, I don't know you, but can you come with anyone who knows you? So a person came up from the people and said, yeah, I know him. So he said, you know him for what? He says, no, he's upright. He's okay. He's good. He says, have you, have you been his neighbor? Meaning, have you lived with him? Uh, that you've seen his 24-7, his day and his night. He said, no. So have you done business with him that you've known how he deals, you know, long term? He says, no. He says, well, have you traveled with him? He says, no. He says, well, then you don't know him because you actually think you know him, but you don't. So you might actually you might actually have met the person, but you don't know them enough to be able to bear witness for them or against them. That's an extremely important message for all of us because sometimes we talk bad about a person without knowing them, thinking that they are bad. And sometimes there is no sign that they are bad, no sign at all. And sometimes that sign or whatever you might have is actually from people who are totally anonymous, from people who are not even prepared to let their identity be known, let alone bearing witness against someone. So we the masses get duped into believing something totally anonymous about someone else in a way that the person who's come with the negativity doesn't even have the courage to actually present themselves and they want us to believe something really negative about a person. If it was positive, anonymously positive, it's okay, it's fine, we can let it pass because it doesn't destroy the dignity of a believer. And the dignity of an individual is actually sacred. It is so sacred that uh, the Prophet ﷺ has described it as being more important than the Kaaba itself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us protection. Actually, in one of the narrations, uh, there is mention made of the honor of a Muslim uh, the honor of another, of, of, of a person, actually. It is so sacred because, obviously, you will be destroying the person, you'll be destroying their life, you'll be having people hate them, dislike them for no reason. So be careful. So if you have a good word to say, Alhamdulillah, uh, if you have a bad word to say, make sure, number one, you are not coming across anonymously. You're not just creating a fitna. You, you come across with your name, proper, who you are, you're prepared to actually bear witness for the sake of Allah. If you're not prepared to do that, then stay away, stay out of things. Secondly, uh, if you have some very bad information that you, you have at hand about someone, and you know that that information is such that if I don't release it and if I don't stand up with it, then it will cause damage to the ummah. And I better let the people know. For example, if a person has a very warped ideology and is preparing some bad actions, maybe uh, to ha hurt people, harm people, or even perhaps sometimes, who knows, maybe even kill people. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us. If you have that type of information and if you know that that is uh, factual, it is your duty, your duty to let those in authority know what's going on so that you can save the rest of us and the rest of humanity. Now, if you think, no, I'm not going to say anything negative, I'm going to keep quiet, you know, perhaps and perhaps, you may be guilty of actually not having, you know, saved people from hurt, from harm, and even from loss of life. That's something important. So if you have some information about someone that would affect others directly, it's your duty to let those in authority, those who can do something about it, have that piece of information. And you need to come out and bear witness. But my brothers and sisters, for us to say, I know this person, and we bear witness for them, for them, 
is actually dangerous. What this means is they have a dispute with someone or they're trying to perhaps, uh, you know, th there is some something negative that's going on and you say, no, I actually bear witness for this person when you don't know them at all. So it's, it's important that we understand the rules and regulations. You only know a person when you've dealt with them, when you've traveled with them, when you've dealt with them, when you've traveled with them, when you've done business with them. Meaning when I say dealt with, uh, you've lived with them, right? So the first one is you've lived with them, either as a neighbor or within the house. Secondly, you've done business with them or traveled with them. These are the three very important factors. There are more factors as well. You've interacted with a person day in, day out, and you know them, you know everything. Then you actually know the person. But be careful. Now, I go back to mentioning uh, that which is negative. A lot of people today tend to just uh, have nothing better to do. They just want to say negatives without realizing who are they talking about? What are they saying? If they're saying something that is bad or incorrect or un, you know uh, something that is incorrect unsubstantiated and uncalled for in that case my brothers and sisters you know what don't forget you pay a price for what you did you pay a price you know i for one uh, i'm really not affected by people who have negatives about me and i don't mind i just I, i'm just concerned at the fact that people don't know you sometimes, they don't know the sacrifices you make for the sake of Allah. Sometimes people benefit from you so much and any small thing that comes up negative, they quickly jump, you know, jump onto the negative bandwagon without even thinking, but I've only benefited from this guy. He's never asked me for a penny. He's actually you know, worked tirelessly to, to serve the ummah. Uh, it's okay, it's fine. I mean, we will still work tirelessly to continue serving the ummah respectfully with dignity and integrity. But at the same time, if you have the disease, that disease is not going to bother me. It's actually going to come back to haunt you at some stage. When you struggle with your, with your family, with your health, with your business, with so many other things, don't blame anyone but yourself. A lot of the times it's to do with the actions of your own self, your mouth, your hands what you've typed, what you've forwarded, what you've said, what you've actually done, all that type of mischief, you pay a price for it. A lot of us are suffering so badly because we love gossip, we love slander, we love to forward tales that have absolutely no base. Yes, if something has a base and it definitely affects the ummah, it's up to you to get up and to make sure that you have borne witness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I want to end off by saying, my brothers and sisters, you know, at times, uh, shaitan comes to us indeed, and shaitan makes us say things and do things sometimes against one another. My brothers and sisters, be very, very careful. Be very careful. Information coming to you, how you process it, how you look at it, how quickly you jump onto the bandwagon. You know, when the evil happened at the time of Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, the Quran speaks about how people were divided into three groups. Allah let it happen in order to watch what people do, how each one processes that news and information. So some of them processed it immediately by saying this is a lie. The others processed it by saying, well, you know what, if we can't do this, they can't do this either. And the, some of them fell into the tail and they started spreading it. And there, there were those who had created the fabrication. Allah says, you know what? you will definitely have a fair share of the punishment, your proportion of the punishment equivalent to your involvement in spreading all of this filth. So, subhanAllah, I sit and I'm actually, uh, you know, uh, saddened by the fact that some people can create something, they can fabricate the certain things in a way, subhanAllah, that looks so real. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ says there will come a time when the truth will be considered false and the, the falsehood would be considered true. I think we've gotten there. There are applications you can have on your phone that can create totally non-existent chats between people. It's just an application. If you're ready to pay a bit of money, you can have quite a good app to create a, a, a discussion between two people that never happened. And secondly, there are certain people who have dedicated their lives to sit and expose others. That's it. Expose what? Something that's got nothing to do with them. And sometimes talk a whole lot of nonsense about people. I say this because of late, 
there have been a lot of these pages that have come about where their only job is to expose those who are doing hard work for the deen, serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, free of charge for a long, long time, so that they create mistrust in the hearts of the, of the Muslim masses, so that they are, they are left with no one to lead them, with no one to look up to. Not everyone is void of morals and values. If you don't have those morals and values, it doesn't mean that we don't have them. If you, if you are not filled with integrity and dignity, it does not mean we are not filled with dignity and integrity. Sometimes out of politeness, you know, you find people, uh, subhanAllah, out of their politeness, being good to everyone. Sometimes that goodness is abused, my brothers and sisters. Remember this. I, I, I've been very, very busy throughout the month of Ramadan, throughout Eid, uh, up to this day. I'm actually traveling. Now I'm traveling back. Uh, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I've been out and I've been away from family, dedicatedly trying to put a smile on the faces of people, reaching out to them, helping them. Sometimes what you get in return from the people is nothing but hate. I tell you, it's fine. That's okay. That's really, really fine. We didn't do it for you anyway. We did it for Allah. He knows. And that's what matters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.